Israel. Uh, thank you for inviting me to, for the discussion. It helped me to clarify my thoughts about the relationship between culture and biological traits. Uh, my uh, attempt to, try, uh, to go into discussing culture is a consequence not of my practical scientific uh, studies that I'm doing with animals, but uh, since I'm living among men for over 80 years, my observation on that allows me to try and speculate something about the relationship between natural phenomena and culture. I'll start with the three top, uh, topics I want to discuss. One, following my initial suggestion of the handicap principle, I ended up by suggesting a theory of signal selection, which suggests that signals are selected by a different selection mechanism than any other trait. The distinction is that any other trait but signals, you have to invest. But if you get it without investment, you still use it. But signals, if there is no need to invest in signaling, and everybody can signal alike, the signal loses its function. It gets into inflation. That is one thing. The second thing will be that I believe that culture can be also divided into signaling culture, which is the arts, music, uh, and all the other things which do not contribute directly to the physical uh, life of the human. And all the rest are like the, they are like signals, and the rest is like other practical traits in nature. And I suggest, and that is the third point I want to put out, is that the interaction between the two selection mechanisms can achieve some things that one selection mechanism could never have achieved. And I'll go and try to uh, widen my uh, talk about these three things. So first, signals. As I have said, that signaling, a signal loses its function if there is no re uh, need to invest in it in such a way that some individuals can invest more in it and some cannot invest in it. And uh, I will uh, go into it directly not from evidence from uh, nature, which will take, would have taken me longer time, but evidence from what I see in cultures. Uh, one signal, take currency. Currency is a signal of wealth. Once everybody has as much currency as it, it wishes, currency loses its function. Take decorations. Lace was used to decorate garments at the time that lace was done by hand. So people uh, displayed their wealth by showing amount of lace they have around their necks and around their hands and in other small places on their garments. But once lace was made by machinery and became cheap, the fashion of having lace as decoration what disappeared within a few years. And now lace is only used in undergarments and I won't go into what is the signal in undergarments, it will take me more time. But I have the answer for it if somebody will be interested. Uh, or take my personal experience. I was one of the first people to go to East Africa to see the animals. But my relatives wanted that I would bring musical instruments and weapons to show off their, that I've been in East Africa. And I was burdened with it. But now that everybody goes there, nobody is coming with all these artifacts because everybody can do it easily. So signals are selected by a mechanism in which if there is no need to invest, if there is no handicap in it to differentiate between signalers or the same signaler under different situation, the signal loses its function. Uh, I suggest that uh, both selection procedures increase fitness. One, the one which is material, if you can invest less and get the same result, you are happy because you 
are uh, left with uh, the possibility to invest in other things. And you can still use a house if you get it free. You can still eat if, if food is free to everybody because it helps you. And you go on uh, using these cultural uh, traits, uh, whatever they are. But in signaling, if, it need not, if there is no need to invest in them to show differences, they are losing the function. So one is increasing fitness or success in cultural uh, dimensions by decreasing investment. The other one is increasing its uh, fitness because of uh, increasing investment. And these are two opposite things like the right hand and the left hand. Now, why, what is the relationship to culture? We have the, as I said, the practical ones, which is having a house, having food, having things to defend yourself from the climate, from neighbors or whatever. These are practical things. Whether you have to invest in them or not, you want to have them. And there are the cultural things, the music, the, the stage, the literature, uh, and I will also include in it basic science, which nobody knows where it will lead. It is just an investment with no direct benefit to the people who are uh, investing in it. So this is comparable to the signaling part in nature that I have studied. And the other things are the material, the practical uh, aspects of culture in which the the aim, why you want to have them, is very clear from the beginning and you opt to get them and it decreases the investment in them. And then uh, the interesting thing is what happens when uh, the two cultures inter or the two uh, signaling mechanisms interact with one another. The problem is how do you go from one aspect strategy of life into something, into another one? like from using uh, stones as uh, artifacts or going into metal. Whoever starts to, among the successful stone, uh, the people who are uh, competing to be the best in the stone culture, will start to invest in playing with metal. It is investing in something and reduces his uh, fitness into something which he, he will not know where, where, the, where it is going. So how you bridge the gap between getting advantage from one culture and starting to get an advantage from another culture, how it can be developed in the same place, not by copying another culture, because it, the gap cannot be bridged by small mutations that, uh, as biologists, I believe that small mutations have to add to one another. And they are usually selected random, uh, se uh, they appear randomly and they are selected if they are at an advantage. And in the beginning, playing with metal when you are stone, uh, uh, using stones does not give you any advantage. So how still it goes down into the situation that suddenly you can start to build a culture of metal and get something efficient from that. And I will illustrate that from biology this time. Uh, ungulates, but, uh, when they were fighting the hornless ungulates, bumped their head one against the other. And then some of them start to develop horns. But horns, in order to develop a horn, you need a lot of mutations until the horn will be a weapon. You have to have uh, growing somewhere on your body a little bit of skin, then fill it with another, uh, uh, another part. And why to put it exactly here where the horns are efficient as weapons? Because in the beginning, when the mutation occurs, it can be on your hand, it can be somewhere, and it, there is no symmetry in it, and there is no shape in it. And this is a, a, a very basic problem to the development of a new thing, which is uh, different from what you are using now in a completely different direction. And I suggest that the top ones in that strategy of life show off by investing and wasting their time, by playing with things to show off that they can be good, although they are wasting their time. That is the handicap principle. 
And you, that is not random, because you have to reduce all the time down and down and down to show off how good you are. Then some of them, some of this wasteful investment in show off may lead you to the point where you can use now to the base where from which you can go and use another direction of culture. That is how I believe how things happened in animals. The horns start with little bumps around the eyes. If the bump is here, it doesn't show where I am looking. But if I have a bump here, you know where my eyes are there, even the ones far away from me. And they, I can show to them that I am interested in them, whether I love them or whether I want to threaten them. And the long, farther they are, the longer are these bumps, and then only have to harden them in order to make them into horns. So these small mutations can lead from one peak of adaptation to the base of another peak of adaptation in biology, and I believe that the same thing can happen in cultures. That in order to show off, people start to look at things which are wasteful, look at the stars, look at the, uh, do some funny things to show, although, uh, I am competing with you by uh, having a, a stone culture. I can still play with other things which are a waste, and I am still better than you are. That is the handicap principle. And uh, you play with uh, uh, iron not in order to make an artifact for efficiency, but in order to show off how good you are in the stone culture until, by chance, you come to a place and you are already uh, trained to use metals to, make, to try and make them into weapons or any other beneficial thing in the practical way of life. So I shall uh, end up, because people ask me to say my things as in short, and those who are interested can read them in the only book I have written with my wife. And uh, so to sum it up once more, natural selection, and this is something which is not yet accepted even by biologists, that is my theory, is happening by two distinct selection mechanisms. And I believe that since culture is also a biological phenomena, culture it can be divided also into two different mechanisms, the practical uh, culture and the signaling uh, culture. And everybody who is doing signaling Culture says, I want to express myself. I want to express myself in dancing. I want to express myself in drawing. I want to express myself as a philosopher. I want to express myself as a basic scientist, uh, somebody who is doing things that nobody is interested in. Just I am interested, I am wasting my time on something which is not useful. I don't have a target. So this is one, uh, that is a, why I believe that culture can be divided into these two things. And the ability of showing off by wasting your time in something which is not practical, you can live and go, come to a place where new practical things can emerge. Not every waste is going there, perhaps one in a hundred, perhaps one in a thousand. But this is an, the only way by which small mutations can lead you from one peak of adaptation, whether it is biology or culture, to another peak. And thank you very much for helping me by the invitation to point this. Program.